Hey, it's Freedom of Fitness from Holistic Songwriting. Today, we're going to talk about how to find your million dollar song title. I want to start by looking at the requirements for our song titles, and specifically, I want to look, take a look at listening situations of your customers or listeners. So there's really two situations in which we uh, get to deal with song titles in our daily lives as listeners. Number one, we hear a song without knowing the song title, for example, at a concert, in a bar, uh, at a gig, or on the radio. And the other is we see the song title first, which might be the case on YouTube, as you see in here, uh, where we get on the right hand column, we sometimes get these recommended uh, videos and we look at the song title first. So we know the title first before we hear the music. So a song title needs to be able to do two things. First of all, it should make the, the transition from I heard the song and I like it and I want to find out what it's called as easy as possible. And second of all, it has to have something that makes me want to click on it. So those are our two requirements for each of our song titles. Let's go through our four points here. Number one is the been a while factor. Not every song needs to have this factor, but it's a nice way of bringing back a song into the mind of your fan, if you will. If for example, every time you heard someone say the phrase, oh, it's been a while, he would think automatically of that song, it's been a while, by Stained. I call this the been a while factor. Think of songs like Let's Get It Started or Call Me Maybe or What Do You Mean? They all have the been a while factor. So this is a great way of making sure that people come back to your songs. But let's get to the next one, which is the duh factor. And I think every song should have really the duh factor, unless you're making art music. But if you're interested in making commercial music, the duh factor is really crucial. So you might ask someone, hey, what's this song called? If they if they tell you, you should immediately have a go at duh. And you should facepalm yourself like this guy's doing here, thinking, why didn't I think of that? Because it's so obvious that this song has to be titled that. Think of Uptown Funk or Rihanna's Bitch Better Have My Money or Firestarter. All these songs, they have a very clear title. You hear the song, you immediately know what the title is going to be. And that's a good thing because you want to make the transition from I heard a song that I like and I want to find out what it's called. Facilitate that transition as much as possible. Number three is the WTF factor. And this is for all those people who are uh, looking for new songs on YouTube. And I think the title speaks for itself. It should be a title that has something about it that makes you go, what the fuck, right? So if you think about titling your song, Love Song, that would be like the worst song title you could ever think of because I'm not gonna click on a song that's called Love Song on YouTube. Call it Wrecking Ball, and that makes things a lot more interesting because Wrecking Ball has a lot of added emotion, a lot of emotional value added to it because you wanna use power words that create an emotion within your fan or your listener. And think of songs like I Can't Feel My Face, right? That is a very strong song title. This summer is going to hurt like a motherfucker. And please excuse all the cursing in this episode. Think of paradoxes in the titles like I Don't Like It, I Love It, Hot and Cold. Think of repetitions, Bang Bang, or alliterations, Walk on Water. There's all these things that you can use to make your song stand out more and to give it that WTF factor. Now let's talk about three more do's and don'ts in choosing your song title. Number one, don't call it like you see it. Don't call your song uh, Love Song. Don't call it the Drum Song, Cool Grooves, or the 5-4 Mashup. Those are all really, really terrible titles because they don't have any emotional value added to them. And again, emotional value is everything when it comes to your song titles. Number two, don't use numbers. Uh, song 2, 4039 are really, really bad titles. Uh, and Song 2 obviously was a huge hit, so, you know, song titles aren't everything, obviously. But in general, you don't want to use numbers. Unless that number has, again, an emotional value. Like uh, Taylor Swift's uh, 1989 does have an added value because that's the year a lot of their listeners were born in. Or take uh, 1939, you know, uh, beginning of the war. That's Those are numbers that make us feel something. So those are big, big numbers for us. And number three, don't use acronyms, uh, unless that acronym is pronounceable. So uh, don't call your song G-I-Q-R-B-T-S, because no one's gonna be able to remember that. But if you call your song Biob or Adidas, um, that's something that people will be able to remember. Uh, so as long as they can pronounce it, you're, on the, you're fine. Now, if you don't want to do all of that work, you can obviously also download this PDF with 201 royalty-free song titles, so you'll never get stuck again with uh, song titles, hopefully in the future. It's a long list of song titles. You just go in and copy-paste one of them for your song, and maybe it inspires you to write a new song even. And you can download it by pressing this orange button on the, on the bottom here. That's it for me. Thanks for listening and talk to me.